So this is a 5. We're starting unit 5, 5.1, basic probability. So first of all, talking about theoretical probability, given the image of all possible outcomes for rolling two dice, we can determine the blank blank of finding any given sum. So the theoretical probability from, and if you look at the picture over here, we can see the different options of sums. The lowest sum we can possibly have is 2, yes. And the highest we can po possibly have is 12. So from 2 to 12. What is the probability of rolling a sum of 8? So the first thing you would do is find the number of total possible outcomes. So you look over and how, find out how many ways are there to roll an 8, a sum of 8. So you have 1, I see 5. Does anyone see more than 5 to get a sum of 8? So it looks like we have 5 possible uh, ways to get an 8. And step two would be to write the event as a ratio. So we would write it as the number of ways the event occurs divided by the number of possible outcomes. So we talked about that in the opener. What are the number of possible outcomes when rolling dice? Yes, 36. So five out of 36 would be the probability of getting the sum of eight. And the last step says to write as a decimal. To write as a decimal, remember we just do, we just divide. So we would divide numerator by denominator, 5 divided by 36. Zero point one four. So in the example above, notice that all chances are equally likely. So it's equally likely that we would roll a 3 and a 5 as it would be to roll a 2 and a 6. So that's what I mean by equally likely. And notice that we called rolling a sum of 8 the event. So the probability for equally likely outcomes is another way to another thing that we call it is the f over n rule. That uppercase n is means the same thing here as it did in our last unit. It means the number in the population. So again, this is just a repeat of what you saw up here. It's just that now they give us a lowercase f to represent the number of ways that the event can occur. Can anyone guess why they chose F? So F stands for frequency in this case. So it's F would be the frequency over the total number of pop possible outcomes. So the science of uncertainty is called theoretical probability, or sorry, probability theory. My bad. Probability theory. Probability theory provides the mathematical bias, mathematical basis for inferential statistics. Inferential statistics is something that we've been talking about all year, and it's used to make decisions based on the likelihood that an event will occur. So here's a few basic pro properties of probabilities. Property number one, these are key, okay? So if you want to circle this, highlight this, put stars next to it, uh, they are somewhat intuitive, but also maybe need we need to talk about them. 
Property 1 says the probability of an event is always between 0 and 1 inclusive. Think about if we made those into percentages. 0 would be 0%, 1 would be 100%. So a probability of something happening is never going to be over 100%. So when we put those as whole numbers, they are 0 to 1. The probability of an event that cannot occur is zero. Never going to happen. Zero percent chance. An event that cannot occur is called an impossible event. Property three, the probability of an event that must occur is one. Okay, so something that has to occur is going to have a 100 percent chance of happening. If I throw this pen up in the air, the likelihood that it lands back on the ground about a hundred percent chance. How about the chance that it comes back down? It might not land on the ground, it might bounce and land on my foot, but the chance that it comes back down would be a one. Example two, which of the following could possibly be a probability? Circle the ones that could possibly be probabilities. C is one of them, yep. A is, yep. As long as the numerator is smaller than the denominator. What about B? Can B be a probability, 3.5? No, right? Because it cannot have a probability greater than 1. If I wrote this as a percent, that would be um, So that would be 350%, right? We can't have that. Experimental probability. Doing an experiment or simulation and then calculating the probability is called experimental probability. It's also known as the simulated probability. At some point, we'll either watch on my screen or you'll have a chance on yours to, do, to see a simulation of dice being rolled and immediately seeing those sums graphed, plotted on a dot plot. The dice are actually rolled on the computer screen, so it's not an actual experiment that we're doing hands-on. It's just simulated. Okay, so uh, real world factors play into this type of probability including gravity, friction, economy, weather, etc. That's why the, your experimental probability is not going to be exactly the same as your theoretical. So next it says calculate theoretical probabilities for the scenarios below. So let's just say we have a, a polling firm hired to estimate the likelihood of the passage of an upcoming referendum obtain the set of data or sorry the set of the survey responses to make its estimate the encoding system for the data one means people are for the referendum and a two means that they are against the referendum if the referendum were held today find the probability that it would pass okay so then we look at this the data okay so we want to look and see how many people were for the referendum well, you already counted <laughs> and then how many were against so that means there were tw how many total voters here 20, right? So that means the probability that someone would be, that it would pass, would be 12 out of 20. We can write that as a decimal. 12 out of 20 would be what as a decimal? 0 0.6 or 60%.
if two balanced dice are rolled, the possible outcomes can be represented as follows. This is the same as what was on the front, but it's just listed as ordered pairs instead of the pictures. Determine the probability that the sum of the dice is 10. So we look, where's a 10? Here's a 10. And oftentimes we can just follow the diagonal if they're listed in order. So you can see there's three times where the sum on the dice equals 10. Are there any other places where it equals 10? Nope. So um, 3 out of 36. If we divide 3 by 36, zero point zero eight is the probability there so another way to write that would be eight percent and that is your notes on theoretical and basic sorry theoretical and experimental probability